largest hedge fund managers in the, in, in the world, arguing for what's termed helicopter money, where it's not just quantitative easing where they're buying bonds. They're actually going to go in and either give major tax breaks uh, to, uh, to middle class and, to, uh, and, and really to everyone, but I think the more likely scenario is if another way of helicopter money is injecting money straight into the banks and those banks loaning it out. A secret Canadian gold play revealed. Near-term gold producer is about to become the hottest hard asset play in North America. Deep value in production in 2016. A mill that is worth over $125 million. Today, the entire company's market cap is less than $25 million. Gold production is being ramped up to begin in less than 12 months. According to their PEA, this will be a low-cost producer with a cash cost of $613 per ounce of gold. Learn more at crushthestreet.com slash MXL. Hello, everyone, and welcome into crushthestreet.com. Uh, today, we're going to have a, a discussion about freedom, economics, and liberty, and I couldn't think of a better person to do that with, to have this discussion with, than Fabian Calvo. Uh, he spent a great amount of time thoroughly understanding and educating people on these matters. His website is FabianForLiberty.com and his very popular YouTube channel, Fabian for Liberty. And he's also a, a real estate professional. And I want to get his thoughts on, you know, real estate as a hard asset. I want to ha have a discussion today about central bank intervention and, and just more. Uh, but first of all, Fabian, thanks for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me on, Kenneth. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Fabian, in our last discussion, you know, we discussed new world order and the controlled collapse coming from central bankers. And uh, there's a great deal of animosity against the wealthy uh, currently, considering 95% of the wealth generated since 2009 has gone to the top 1%. And uh, I'll start you off with this. Would you say there's some misallocated anger prevailing through our country at the moment? You know, I think it is. And I think really what it stems from is people, not just in America, but in Europe, really all over, uh, seeing a, 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 a central bankers, seeing the one, what I would say is the 1% of 1%, Kenneth, operating basically with impunity. I mean, their crimes basically have been exposed, uh, and uh, people are upset about that. I think what's important, though, when we talk about the wealthy, and let's say the 2% of, uh, of, or let's just say the 5% of people just in America, you know, only about 5% of Americans, when they reach 65 years old, so pretty rough estimate, some say 3 to 6%, have enough money to retire comfortably, meaning they're not dependent on Social Security or government handouts. So it's a very small percentage to begin with. And out of millionaires in America, 1% to 2%, Kenneth, the overwhelming majority of them are self-made millionaires that did not inherit large sums of money. Mm. So really, the, the collapse of capitalism, per se, as far as the trust in capitalism, has been blown up by crony capitalists. People like Warren Buffett, George Soros, um, you know, Lord Blankfein, all these other people that really, like I said, operate with impunity, and you know, their, their crimes have been exposed. And so that's where I think uh, there's, there's kind of a, um, a, a lack of understanding as far as what real wealth, people that have really genuinely created wealth, which I think in this country is still possible, uh, versus those that have, in essence, bribed and stolen and colluded uh, to achieve their wealth. Mm. Yeah, no, I couldn't ag agree with you more. There's definitely a tremendous amount of crony capitalism uh, prevailing in our country. Uh, but, you know, there's also just the simple fact that we've seen a massive increase in our money supply. The M0 money supply has gone straight from $800 billion in around 2008 and for four trillion plus here in 2016 and we know that that this increase in the money supply has trickled in to asset price inflation which is what the wealthy own and they've gotten richer as a result of this and we've seen stocks go up and real estate and i'm betting 
certainly on the effects of all this you know expansion of the money supply trickling into a much larger degree in gold and silver but uh, take for instance the un unintended consequences in just real estate alone we've had higher home prices and now this is causing you know the wealthy who have owned the homes who own homes to get richer and now a much larger degree of people can't afford homes and they have to rent and now we're seeing rents go up and it's really an example of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer because of central bank intervention and uh, I, I don't know if you have any thoughts or comments on this and uh, maybe even how it's playing into the new world order agenda yeah you know great question Kenneth and it's interesting I think uh, many listeners may have seen I believe it was the London Independent. Uh, that wrote an article regarding this uh, Bilderberg conference that's taking place in Dresden, Germany. And one of the topics are what they're calling the precariat, uh, which is a term coined by an uh, English economist. And in essence, it's that class of people that you just described, people disenfranchised, people that are seeing their incomes dwindle, seniors that are barely getting by with their uh, Social Security checks. And so it's a, it's a rather large group of individuals. And I think that... I think that the world elite know this, and you know they would they would directly link that to the rise of nationalism, which we're seeing everywhere from India to the Philippines to the United States here with Donald Trump to France, and that's something that really freaks them out. I mean, look, this Brexit vote takes place June 23rd freaks them out as well. They they want more uh, internationalism. They want more of the ability to have these kind of EU bodies unelected bureaucrats that regulate our lives and regulate the economies. And mm. so if they see a break above that, it, I think panics them. Now, so they have really two options, and I think that the second option I'll discuss first, which is a controlled collapse. I think that if the economy were to collapse significantly, the global economy, you will likely see people that uh, it could go either way. That's more of a risky bet for them, because that could go towards uh, major nationalism, like we saw, for example, in Germany after hyperinflation, or it could go to like we saw in 2008, where people voted for someone like Barack Obama, who in essence was promising government spending and government intervention to in essence raise incomes and to boost the economy, which we know has failed miserably. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of option number two that I think that they have. I personally, personally believe before we see that, Kevin, we're going to see their option one. And option one is going to be a continued expansion of the money supply. I think we're, we're really looking at two scenarios where one is some kind of global stimulus that potentially can take place. For example, if the, if the UK did leave uh, the EU, we could potentially see um, uh, some kind of coordinated global stimulus. I also think here in the United States, which already we have the likes of people like Ray Dalio, one of the largest hedge fund managers in the, in, in the world, arguing for what's termed helicopter money, where it's not just quantitative easing where they're buying bonds. They're actually going to go in and either give major tax breaks uh, to, uh, to middle class and, to, um, and, and really to everyone. But I think the more likely scenario is, is another way of helicopter money is injecting money straight into the banks and those banks loaning it out. And in a way, you're starting to see that already. That's why we've seen, as you mentioned, stock prices, going up, look, I think we're going to see a Dow hit 20,000. People think that's crazy, but I don't when you see the amount of money that's being printed and circulated into the market. And I think housing prices will likely continue, especially as they begin to roll out more easy financing subprime loans. Like we saw Wells Fargo two weeks ago come out with a real quick and easy plan for people with a 580 credit score or higher to get a home loan with only 3% down but the funny thing is, is that that 3% can come from federally funded government assistance, prog assistance programs, which in essence means it's a no money down loan. Mm. Uh, so I think that that's likely what we're going to see first um, is, uh, is just more stimulus to try to, uh, to try to what they think, to try to boost the economy. And I think that's a for sure in if we see someone like Hillary Clinton get elected. Fabian, is there any indication as to how long they can get away with this? 
excessive money printing. I mean, we've seen the effects of money printing, obviously, in the extreme examples, Weimar, Germany, Zimbabwe, Argentina, you know, now in Venezuela, Hungary, and just so many of these other uh, countries, Yugoslavia. I mean, obviously, these are the, the most extreme. And, you know, it's fair to say that these aren't, you know, they weren't significant as significant as the U.S. And, and the position that the U.S. is in at the moment. But how is there any indication as to how long the U.S. can get away with this excessive amount of money printing? Well, you know, that's an interesting point because um, when you're talking about these other countries that have defaulted historically or had serious hyperinflation, hyperinflation or we see what's happening in Venezuela, I think, you know, central bankers in the U.S., I think the big banksters, I think they all believe, well, yeah, that happened to those countries, but that can happen to the United States because we're special. Unfortunately, for that perspective and that point of view, the laws of economics work across the board. Now, of course, the larger the economy, the more prolonged they can drag out 0% rates. But look, now you have a lot of extremely wealthy people uh, talking about the effects of rate policy the Fed has now kept for over 10 years and how dangerous it is. Keep in mind that they took this off their website, but a few years ago, by the Federal Reserve's own economic charts, they were showing that a 0% interest rate policy extended over a period of 15 to 20 years would result in a third, in a devaluation of the U.S. dollar by a third. Well, we're going on over 10 years already. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I think... You know, Kenneth, I think that they think that a, uh, a, a type of monetary collapse like that isn't, isn't possible in the U.S. Um, I personally think that they're wrong. But as far as how long they can continue, look, you know, something that I think is important is that there's a lot of people out there that are forecasting the economy. Since 2008, Kenneth, you would know better than anyone, a lot of people have been talking about a collapse, a collapse, a collapse. Mm. Well, look, I, from 2008 to 2016 could have been calling for a collapse as well. The truth is, at some point, I'm going to be right. Mm. However, it's, it, it's a little bit more difficult to say, well, you know, back in 2012, and I was talking about, actually, we're headed for a artificial manipulated boom in both real estate and in stocks because of what they're doing with the money supply. Mm. How long it can go on, I, I quite frankly think, you know, often we'll hear the Fed has run out of, uh, you know, they've run out of weapons. There's nothing else that they can do. Well, I would equate that to saying, you know, they've used bazookas and they use semi-autos. Now they're likely going to come out with the Hellfire missiles, which are things like uh, helicopter money, which are literally cash infusion printed up by the Fed to boost the economy. And this isn't just my thoughts. Again, very wealthy people are already talking about how they think that's the way we should boost the economy. Spend trillions of dollars and allow the Fed to gradually increase rates. And I think ultimately it's going to end badly. Now, I don't foresee that happening prior to the election, only because I think these same powers that be, if you will, are in the bag for Hillary Clinton. I'm convinced of it. I speak to a lot of these guys, and they all think Clinton's better than Trump, because they'll still basically continue the same type of culture we've seen on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. But I think post-2016 election, anything is possible. And quite frankly, um, they may use someone like Clinton in office uh, have a serious downturn in the economy to then justify the spending spree that they want to go on. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Fabian, in the same vein of central banks l losing control, uh, I mean, European banks at the moment are, are in a tailspin due to negative interest rates. And uh, in, the, in the middle of the worst two-week drop for European central, or not central banks, European banks, since 2012 and it would appear that the most powerful entities in the world are losing control and uh, just your thoughts on this at the moment I mean are the powers that be is this part of the controlled collapse or are they losing control of what whatever control they had left you know going back Kenneth to this notion of what the um, world elites, if you will, are, are talking about a Bilderberg, this concern over the rise of nationalism, personally, and with this coming vote for the UK to leave the EU. I personally think that there, uh, the potential exists for a, a, a crisis and a uh, disintegration of the EU 
of these centralized powers, I think it really freaks them out. Um, and so, yeah, they are absolutely the I mean, look, you got Mario Draghi is buying, in essence, junk bonds, and it's 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 worse off than almost the Bernie Madoff scam, which is really amazing. I mean, you know, it, it really that's what it comes down to. And I think that if we see, for example, the UK leave the Brexit, we can see copycats, uh, other countries uh, that decide to leave as well. Because look, the truth is, is that the EU has completely failed. We have countries like Switzerland who are not part of the EU. They're doing just fine. And, you know, again, it's, it's this kind of narrative we've seen that if we are more internationalist, if we come together more as far as you know, obliterating borders and culture, and that's somehow going to make it economically safer. And I think that's just been exposed as a complete fraud. It's not true. So, you know, Europe is in a real precarious position. When I see someone, for example, like George Soros, who is getting back into, getting back into running basically his hedge fund that he's kind of not stepped down from, but moved away on the investment decisions, He's, he's loading up on gold, he's loading up on miners, he's warning of a crisis in the EU. The reason he's telegraphing that, uh, Kenneth, is because he's looking for some kind of like dog pile effect, where you're going to have investors and other people begin to now buy into the assets he's bought into, so he can see a quick return on his money. So yeah, look, there is a lot of, uh, um, there's a lot of potential, I believe, for serious, serious risks, not only just in the EU, but I think the global economy overall, you know, a big, a big kind of elephant in the room, if you will, is China, one of the largest accumulators of debt since 2008, and eventually their central planning is going to fail as well, mm -hmm. and um, it's going to hurt uh, not just China, but it's going to hurt countries all around the world. Uh, Fabian, one of your latest videos, uh, you, you talked about the Brexit vote, uh, the yes vote. Uh, will collapse the EU, and we talked about that a little bit here uh, previously. And I, I want to get your thoughts. Do you, and, and this is something you talked about in the video, do you believe that there will be a yes vote, or, or will it be manipulated? And, uh, you know, what will this mean for the European Union? Well, look, I mean, for some of your listeners, when they hear, Kenneth, uh, about votes, and elections being rigged. You know, that's maybe for some people. I mean, for me, it's not. I suspect maybe for yourself, it's not either. Mm. But for some, that's kind of a hard thing to swallow. They really, people really do believe their votes count and there are these, uh, and there are these free and fair elections. Uh, look, I mean, there, when, when we had Scotland voting for independence, there's reports out there that there was a lot of not only vote rigging, but there was some, you know, MI5, MI6, um, intelligence agencies working to subvert the vote and the will of the people. I, I really think that you're going to see those same powers, if you will, at play. Uh, I personally think that a, as, as, look, I mean, if you read, pick up any British tabloid, uh, from the London Guardian, the London Independent, uh, Financial Times of London, most of the opinion columns and most of the articles being written are in favor of a Brexit. Yet, I think, and so I think the general population, the general consensus is yes, we would do better if we were not, if we were not uh, basically being overrun by the EU, if these laws weren't being dictated. I mean, look, the EU has hundreds of different uh, cabinets and ministries. They have four different presidents. Nobody knows what's going on. Everyone's, uh, everyone's unelected in essence. The EU parliament, members of the EU parliament, can't even write legislation to get voted on. They're basically just like, it's, it's kind of like a ceremonial parliament, if you will. Mm. And I think as more of that comes out, can kind of people are just saying to themselves, look, this is absolute insanity. Mm. But I think also, I think that, uh, I hope I'm wrong. Ultimately, I think that there will be a no vote on the Brexit only because of the serious election fraud going on. Yeah, uh, Fabian, it really is just more indication of the system failing. Um, you know what? You gave us a, a lot of amazing information today, Fabian. I, I want to just get some closing thoughts from you, kind of, you know, your overall general advice for people here in 2016. And, uh, you know, if people want to reach out to you and learn more about you, of course, let them know where they can go and what they will find. Yeah, well, look, I think, uh, you know, someone who... Uh 
is I believe gold and silver for me are a are a kind of an insurance policy. I don't really view gold and silver as an investment. I look at it as a insurance policy, as many other people have talked about, against a failing dollar or against some of these failing systems that we've talked about on this interview, Kenneth. I believe in creating wealth. The way that I do that is through real estate. And look, some people do that through stocks. There's a variety of different ways, you know, buying and selling businesses. And I, I personally think opportunity is going to always exist. And quite frankly, I think we're going to see some opportunities of a lifetime when things begin to really spiral out of control. So, you know, I would suggest people begin to save some cash, put some of that in gold and silver, and begin to educate yourself on some of these different financial assets that are out there that potentially you could learn to trade and to build your wealth with. Uh, you know, uh, and I think another important thing, too, is people need to start living uh, living within their means. I read the other day, Kenneth, credit card debts now surpassed over a trillion dollars in the country. Mm-hmm. I think you need to save money, you need to cut expenses, and take that excess capital to save and invest it. That's how people get wealthy. That's how you build your wealth. And um, and, and that's what I believe. And look, for more information on you know my videos and the work that I have out there, you can just go to FabianForLiberty.com, but Fab number four, Liberty.com, and basically all my info is on there. Fabian, again, uh, excellent conversation. Thanks again for coming on the show. You bet, Kenneth. Thanks for having me on.